Warning, Adam is not trained and is not a professional. Attempt what you see on this channel at your own risk. Droning discretion is advised. Hey, what's up? I'm Adam with Aerial Motion Photography and I'm back at the game with another one of my self-proclaimed, world famous, best side-by-side -side video comparisons on all of YouTube. I'm gonna be flying the DJI Air 2S in both 4K and 5.4K, putting those videos side-by-side -side and getting to look at the detail, the quality, the highlights, the contrast, everything like that, and to see what are the differences. Can you really see that much more when you're filming in 5k so if that sounds interesting let's get into it okay we have the 5.4k on the left the 4k on the right and i'm flying in corona del mar southern california at the tide pools and i'm coming up from one of the cool little cave sections that they have both sides the footage looks really good the left side of the rock it does look a little bit darker the other side may be a little bit more overexposed they're both shot in auto mode and using the same nd filters in either shot when you export 5.4k into a 4k timeline you're able to kind of compress those pixels so theoretically you're getting more detail in that video i do notice that the water is a little bit darker on the 5.4k side and if you're impressed with how well i'm able to line up these videos don't forget to hit that thumbs up button and i'm going to be coming at this from another angle where we can see it a little bit better Okay, now that we're focused more on, I'll just call it the finger of the cave, and none of this is zoomed in more than it is, it just slid over. So we're not zooming in or losing any quality. And when you really look at this, they look similar. Maybe it's not as apparent how much darker the 5.4K is, but I do notice a little bit more contrast in the 5.4K. In this shot, when I'm shooting straight ahead, you can really see how similar they look, especially at the sky. That's probably the only spot where I can tell that the 5.4K is a little bit darker. I'm gonna go to a new angle where I'm gonna have the cliff on both sides, and then we can see how well that is lit up and kind of what detail can we see. So here we have the cliffs very very similar on the 4k side things do look a little bit brighter i do see a tiny bit more different colors maybe more blue out of the 5.4k but in my opinion it is almost impossible to see any differences between these two shots and here we are doing another look down shot if you want to know more cinematic shots, I made a video you can click up here on how to do cinematic shots. So this is considered the bird's eye view. Here the same shot is at 50% speed. Let me know if you can see any differences. This looks almost identical. Maybe the 4K has a tad bit less contrast to it. And here I am flying back in. And if you couldn't tell that little blip in the middle where I'm trying to seam these things together, it looks like it's all one piece. Getting closer to the sand and getting closer to the water, you do kind of see a little bit more shading and a little bit lighter green in the 5.4K side. But just like I've been saying in most of these examples, it is very, very similar. And here's another down shot split down the middle. This one's a little bit harder to tell since the rock is dry on one side and then it's wet on the other. So I'm gonna put the same dry side side by side. Looking at them very, very similar. I can't really tell any change of detail. In this shot right here, I thought this is where it can show the contrast the most. So looking at the water, the water is a little bit darker on the 5.4K side 
and then looking on the right side at the rocks. More contrast and it is darker, especially as we work our way up to the sand. This probably shot shows the biggest difference between contrast and the biggest difference between light and dark out of all of them in this video. And then here's a bonus clip. So this is that same shot we had in the beginning and I'm gonna be sliding back and forth with the different quality. So as we slide on over, this is the 5.4K. And then I'm gonna bring it back around, sliding across to the 4K. Along the rock, you can just see it is a little bit lighter. The footage is amazing, 4K, 5.4K. I'm blown away by this Air 2S. And then now I'm gonna slide it back over to 50%. Man, that lines up so well. I see more detail and contrast in the 5.4K and the 4K, the rock does look a little bit brighter and duller. After comparing the footage, these are my takeaways. So one of the biggest things that I noticed was when you put the 5.4K next to the 4K is you can see more contrast and the whites are brighter in the 5.4K. Besides that, they are very, very similar. So would I recommend you guys to shoot in 5.4K or 4K? And um, this is just for me personally. So ever since I've had this drone, I've been almost shooting in the 5.4K exclusively and I do it for a few reasons. First, it's just awesome to be able to do it. Second, if you wanna export your video into 4K timeline, you can be zoomed in a little bit more and you don't lose any quality. So I think that's kind of cool because everything you have with a drone, it's usually from a far away distance. And when I like to crop into things in general, I'm always weary about how much I do it because it's gonna lose the quality. So I like being able to zoom in and to not lose any quality. And that's very good. But let's say if I wanted to shoot something and put it in like a slower motion, the 5.4K, it only does 30 frames per second. But compared to 4K 60, you can really slow things down without losing quality. So it's almost like, do you want to be able to zoom in a little bit more? Or do you want to be able to slow things down a little bit more? That's kind of a way to put it. And then also just a kind of drawback or a negative that I've realized shooting the 5.4K is that I've never drained so many SD cards so quickly as I have shooting in that resolution. So I just purchased the SanDisk Extreme Pro and it's the 256 gigabyte version. I never thought I'd have to buy something that big. Usually the 128s are good enough and I always recommend having smaller size cards and multiple ones in case your drone like flies away. You don't lose all your footage, but it seems like I can just put so much, I have tons of batteries and I just love to fly this. So I can fill up cards pretty quickly. So I haven't got to use this card yet. It's the biggest size that DJI says on their website that will work. And one last thing, okay. So not that DJI is listening, but they did comment on one of my videos. But if you guys make another drone, especially that can put out this kind of quality footage, I wish that it had more internal memory. And I mean, it's awesome to have the eight gigabytes, you know, if you lose your SD card or if you can't find it or you didn't bring it, that's cool to be able to film it. But I don't know why they couldn't have put something larger or I mean a 32, a 64, they really don't cost that much. So I'm kind of, I kind of wish they would have put a bigger one. And then also, so let's say it was the cost and they're like, we're being nice enough just to give you the eight gigabytes. Well, maybe do like what they do for iPhones and you can buy like the higher memory ones and they usually cost more. So I would have purchased one with the 256 in it for a hundred dollars more if it came with it in it rather than just paying like 50 or $60 for this card. 
Besides that, that's going to conclude this video. If you found this video entertaining or educational, give it a big thumbs up. That means a lot to me. Subscribe down below if you want to see more videos like these, and then check those notifications. You'll be notified when I upload my newest videos. As always, my name's Adam. Fly safe. Take care. Peace.